Hey everyone, my name is Simple Steve and this is my YouTube channel. It's dedicated towards simple living, van life, and nomadic philosophy. Now, if you're anything like me, the city is the last place that you want to be in if you're living out of a vehicle or your van or a camper. But it's not always realistic to always be out in the forest or in the desert and uh, say you're working a full-time job and you just need to be in the city and you're just starting out it can be a little scary I know so today I'm gonna to give you five tips that I've learned that'll just make the process a lot more easier all right so I just want to preface this video by saying that I'm living out of a minivan and if you're in a camper van or a big rig or one of those white cargo vans with solar panel on top and a fan on top those are kind of dead giveaways, so some of these tips might not apply, but hopefully they do. My number one tip is probably what is on a lot of people's minds when they're first starting out is where the heck do I park safely at night where I can feel at ease? Well, my advice would be to brainstorm places that you want to try to park at beforehand because there's nothing worse than trying to find a place to sleep at night and you're just dead tired and you're rush, running around and you just get more worried because you're like, ah, this place isn't, doesn't feel right. So brainstorm of places that you want to sleep at. The places you don't want to go are private property, whether it's a business or in front of a person's house. Uh, you also don't want to park overnight in parks because usually they're patrolled. Cops and security officers usually are looking for things... <laughs> going awry in parks. Um, places you do want to uh, sleep at night are your friend and family's driveway, if you happen to know somebody, 24-hour uh, fitness gyms, uh, hotels or hospitals are a pretty good idea. Um, if your gut is telling you that, say, it's probably not safe, you're just getting a sketchy feeling, just trust that feeling. And also, if you think that cops or security patrols that area quite often, it's probably not a good idea to stay there. All right, so my second tip has to do with timing and mobility. My advice would be to park right before you go to bed, so I'll arrive at the parking lot or wherever, you're, wherever you decide to park, right before bedtime, and then wake up early. I wake up at 5 a.m., and so most people don't even know that I stayed there overnight because it's not during business hours. Don't hang around. Don't don't show up like super early and be walking around your van and like setting up camp. It's not a good idea because people will notice. So you don't want to park in the same area every night. You want to be mobile. So move around. Have two to three places that you can just kind of switch up. I probably wouldn't even park in the same parking space. Say two days from now I went to the same place I did last night just kind of park in a different area. That way people aren't recognizing a pattern. And a little tip, I would have things to do before you go to sleep. So you want to have a routine, say you get off work, have a routine, have things to do in public places. Uh, places that you're allowed to be, that way you don't feel like you're trespassing or anything like that. This kind of lifestyle, if you're living under your van, it forces you to take action, which is one of the reasons I love about this is because one of the reasons I did this was to have more intention with my life compared to living indoors. I'm not saying everybody's this way, but when I live in, lived indoors, uh, I'm, I tend to watch TV and just sit on my ass and I'm lazy. So this kind of lifestyle forces you to take action. So I would just make it a lot easier for yourself, have a routine, have things you love to do. So my third tip for camping in the city in your camper van has to do with stealth. Stealth is super important because you don't want people knowing that you're sleeping in your van or what have you. So, little advice, if you guys haven't already, definitely look into getting the Reflectix panels for your windows and cover one side of the Reflectix with blackout fabric. So once these are up in place, you can even turn a light on in your car and people won't know that you're in there makes it a lot easier. Another thing is, especially at nighttime, like when you're getting ready for bed, 
you don't want to be getting out of your vehicle too much you don't want to be opening your doors because people will be curious they'll look and they'll see that you have a bed you have just a lot of stuff going on there it's not a normal vehicle you know just the other day uh, I was at an open space and it was no big deal it was evening time uh, but I had my doors open because I was bringing my stuff over to, to make dinner on a table that was like 30 feet away and I just kind of left my doors open but I looked around as people were getting in their their vehicles and people looked at my van they knew that I had a little setup in there so you don't want to be opening your doors too much so another stealth factor is you don't want to have stickers all over your van or your car displaying that you're into van life or national parks. This, I mean, you can take or leave this tip, but it does help the stealth factor quite a bit. Um, you also don't want to have stickers on your car because then people will be able to recognize that you've been there before. So if you're staying at the same place a couple times throughout the week, people are going to see that sticker and they'll know what's up. And so you can also park behind trees or a lamppost or a fence, like anything to help your chances at not being seen as much by security or police or the business owners or whatever. I forgot to mention I'm at an open space called Dawson's Butte near Castle Rock in Colorado. And that is Dawson's Butte right there. What a butte. I also like to call it Dawson's Butt, but I'm 34 years old and I feel kind of old for a joke like that. Tip number four has to do with cooking dinner. Now, if you're like me, I don't want to be eating out all the time, I'm trying to save money. I'm trying to be more intentional with my diet and my health. So where are you going to cook if you're staying in the city? Well. My recommendation is going to a park, a city park or an open space. Usually there's gonna be tables, uh, there's gonna be grills that you could cook on, and people are kind of expecting people to like bring picnics or, you know, people are expecting people to eat there. And so like if a patrol or police officer comes by, they're not gonna think anything of it. And it's a park, you're out in nature, there's other people enjoying themselves. After dinner, you could read or write or just, you know, listen to a lecture or something. It's a great place to be uh, before you go to bed, before you go park to go to sleep. So my fifth and final tip has to do with attitude. And so just try to stay positive and optimistic, especially if you're in a scenario to where you have to stay in the city and you're not able to go camp in the forest or public land. So have things to do, have things you like to do around the city. Go to the library and read or go rock climbing. I have a rock climbing gym. Uh, take care of your physical health and your mental health. Make this time a time to create a solid routine that benefits your life even in the midst of a place that you might not necessarily enjoy. Believe me, I, I really get tired of driving in the city. so. I don't drive a lot. I just try to find things to do for a couple hours here and there in segments and just have a solid routine. It'll save on gas, it'll save on headache. It seems like everybody and their mom these days is in a rush to get everywhere. And I just want to encourage you by letting you know that living in your vehicle in the city, it will become familiar and comfortable over time. These tips are just my tips take them or leave them but you will be able to find out yourself what works for you just know that it is possible and I want you guys to be excited and optimistic even having the idea that you can live in the city in your vehicle it's just gonna take some time to getting used to it especially if you've never done anything like this before Alright, so those are my five tips for living out of your vehicle when you have to be in the city. So hopefully that helps, and if you guys can think of anything that I missed, uh, please let me know in the comments. And like the video if you liked it, and subscribing to my channel would be awesome, but you don't have to. Anyways, I'm going to just lay down here on this table 
and just enjoy the silence of nature. So you guys have a great day. I appreciate you guys watching. Be well.